Okay, we are live again, but for how long, that is the question. So, colour harmony, what does it mean? It is basically how to make paintings look more harmonious, really, more pleasing to the eye. Um, and there are a few ways you can do it with the standard colour wheel. Um, and I'll just talk it because obviously the colour wheel is a useful guide. It's not the be all and end all, especially just the, the red, yellow, blue bit, because what yellow, what red, mm -hmm. what blue. Um, so we'll be sort of looking at that as a whole, which will be quite interesting. Um, the colours could actually be taken, you know, the way I use my special eight colours. You could take it slightly differently so that red, orange was more cadmium red. Red purple was crimson, purple blue was ultramarine, green blue cerulean, green yellow, lemon yellow, and orange yellow, um, lemon yellow. Yeah? So you could do it that way because they are those colours. Um, it's just that more are more. Hello, Vanessa. Hello, Lee. How are you? I'm hoping I'll be able to read any comments, but um, if you do comment, don't be too upset if I don't answer you until after the demo like I did last time because I was talking to people and not, the comments weren't coming up. Mm. So I didn't know if they could actually listen or not. So we've got people in the classroom, people on Facebook. That's fun. Right. So there are six ways of creating harmony from your colour wheel. The first one is basic complementary. So a complementary colour is the colour opposite the colour wheel. So basic, basic is red and green, purple and yellow, and orange and blue. So when you put those next, next to each other, there is a harmony, but a vibrant harmony. They're very, they almost jar. A lot of logos are actually done using complementary colours because they make each other stand out. They, they sort of like emphasise and galvanise each other. Um, but also you've got these other mid-tones. So say we've got cadmium red, which is an orange red. The complementary colour to that is bluey green, which is cerulean. And with the alizarin crimson, it's lemon yellow. And with cadmium yellow, it's ultramarine. So they're also harmonious colours together. Um, you see, the, the trouble is with the, with the, um, with the colour wheel, it's very limited in terms of, there's a whole range of orange yellows going from more to the yellow to more of the orange. It's the same as the reds, it's the same as all of those colours, it's just such a wide variety. Which bit do you go for? So you've got complementary, so A, red and green. If I just do it with the, with the others, so we've got... Um, if we go with orange, red and blue, green, so we've got um, cadmium red here. And cerulean blue, they are complementary pairings. So they are harmonious. I was always told when I was young that red and green should never be seen. Correct? Yes, but anything with green, it uh, depends where you go in the country. Whatever in green should never be seen because it rhymes, I think. Oh, I but it's, it. it's basically, <laughs> that's all it is. Um, so cadmium yellow, which is the orange yellow, that um, complementary pairing is ultramarine. So this sort of takes it one step beyond just basic red and green, blue and whatever, which is, which is fine but it depends which red and which green you see. A certain green and a certain red won't go. So that's why the colour wheel is a little bit tricky. If you have an extended colour wheel like we've got here, it works a bit better. So we've also got, um, what else are we missing? Oh, crimson or carmine. And lemon yellow. So they, these are actually complementary coloured pairings. Now, when they're side by side, they make each other seem more vibrant. Whereas when they're mixed together, they make dull versions. So um, <laughs> cad red and cerulean, when mixed together, make an almost grey version of purple. Um, cad yellow and ultramarine make a dull green, a dark green. 
and uh, alizarin crimson and lemon yellow make a dull dark orange with other complementaries um if you mix a green and mix it with the red you end up with brown if you mix a purple and mix it with a yellow you'll get brown if you end up with uh, a an orange and you mix it with a blue you'll get brown which is why when a lot of people are beginning they make mud mm -hmm. because you're dealing with three colors really you're mixing an orange which is made from a red and a yellow and then you're adding um, the blue to it and then you'll start getting browns it, it's interesting how to do it um, for example if I mix a green if if you follow the sense of this wheel if we mix a yellow green with a blue green we'll get a green green yeah because we've got one of each so if I use um, cerulean blue which is a blue green and then go with yellow green which is lemon yellow when I mix these together I get quite a bright green because both of both of those colors have got green in them so they're going to reflect more green put a bit more yellow in so if i then go with a red so let's stick with cadmium red and mix that in so these are complementary pairings yeah red and green very basic if I mix those together, so side by side they make each other jar, as all complementary colours do, but can you see I've got a brown, which is the most popular colour for painters to make, is this mud, it's really easy to make, which is why when I teach I tend to use just two together. Um, so that is one, one basic harmonious pairing is two colours that are complementary, so they are opposite each other in the colour wheel. So you can see they are more vibrant against each other. And if you change those, I'm not a big fan of using the terms warm and cool colours, because that actually does depend on the relationship of a colour. So a warm colour next to a different colour can actually look cool. Um, and a cool colour next to a different colour can look warm. So just branding it warm and cool is a little bit misleading because it does change a lot. So that is one harmonious mixing. The next one is called analogous. It's a nice word. Analogous. And that works. So if so we've used green as an example here. Analogous works and a lot of gardeners use this when they're making um, their flower beds up. Analogous is where you choose a colour and then you have the colours either side it on the colour wheel planted together. So if you've got an orange flower, you'll have red orange and yellow orange all in the same bed and that creates a nice pleasing eye. If you think actually of Van Gogh's sunflowers, that's analogous because it's all yellows and reds and oranges. Um, Monet's water lilies, analogous of... Um, this sort of a blue green blue and purple so they're all sort of in that that color you can take it further but if you take it too far you start getting a bit bizarre with your mixes so if i made that green again so we'll go with a green which would be a sort of mix so that's complementary analogous is where you have a chosen color and then you work with the colours opposite it in the colour wheel. So we've got yellow-green to the side and a blue-green to the other side. That's harmonious because you've only got two colours, really. It's almost monochromatic if you think about it. We've got the yellow and the blue, and in it you've got all the varying shades from the green to the blue green and from the yellow to the green so if you painted using that that color mix you're going to get harmony in your work because they're all they're all that green is made up of those two colors 
Does that make sense? So if you painted like that, um, with your trees, for example, you know, you don't want trees to jar when you're painting the foliage. So you, you'd want an analogous or analogous, analogous um, look to your trees. So if you pick two colours, a yellow and a blue, so if you wanted a dark green, you would go with those, uh, the cad yellow and the ultramarine. It just makes a big difference to how the harmony works. So you could pick, you could pick any. Um, if we go with um, a, ooh, what should we go with? A violet, a purple. So to make that purple, we'll mix a red purple and a blue purple. So carmine or crimson and ultramarine will give us a purple, beautiful. I'm always aware when I'm doing these things of how I say words like purple, because I, I know it's not how everybody says purple. Pur purple. We are, aren't we? How do you say purple? Purple. Well, sometimes purple, sometimes I'll go purple, like purple, but I'm not even from up there. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So we've got our purple mix, and then we'll go to the violet red or the purple red, which is crimson or carmine. I've just blobbed a bit of water on there, but that's okay. And then the other side is purple blue, which is ultramarine. So a painting like this is harmonious because it's using all of the mixes made from those three colours. So it's more pleasing on the eye. Mm. Yeah? Mm. You know, contrast, didn't it? It, it? Instead of going together like that, there's actually a split between yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's basically two primaries and a secondary um, when you're working with this sort of thing, um, the way I'm doing it. You've also got triadic. <gasps> Triadic. No, I wish, I wish, because I'd be very famous if I did. So if we went with um, purple, orange and green are triadic because they're equal points. So you've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So purple, orange and green are triadic. So um, let me make an orange up. Well, the colour wheel itself was actually invented in the 1700s as, as a main guide for painting. But since then... You've got colour theory and colour psychology, which was invented, um, I say it was invented, it's always been around. Da Vinci played with the idea quite a lot. And then in the 1800s, a, um, a French gentleman with the surname Chevreau um, published a book um, in France on colour psychology and colour theory, which is what then boosted the Impressionists and... Um, Pizarro, Sura, all of those that, you know, with the pointillism and all of that, it's understanding how colours work and how we see colour. So Da Vinci sort of in, discovered it by looking at it in depth, but didn't have sort of like the mainstream science to back it up. But by the 1800s with the Industrial Revolution and more use of understanding of lenses and optics and all of that sort of thing, it then became more understandable for them to see how we see colour, how colours work and all of that. So triadic is when you're using, um, we've got a green, which is made up of those two, an orange, which is made up of those two, and then a purple, purple, so that would be a harmonious mm. colour mix. It doesn't actually look wrong, you know, it no. doesn't, it, and you'd think, oh, an orange, a green and a purple, what, what on earth? Mm -hmm. But by working with distinct points, so you could do red, bl red, blue and yellow are also complementary, however, you know, as a triad scheme, but just using the term red, blue and yellow, which red, which blue, which yellow, you know, 
would cadmium red, cerulean blue and cadmium yellow work or would ultramarine, carmine and lemon yellow, you know, it, it's, it's harder when you just go with a basic colour because there is no such thing as a red paint or a yellow paint or a blue paint or a green paint. They're all leaning towards another tone. So that's why I'm kind of avoiding the red, blue and yellow one because they don't really exist. You can't just go, I'll have a tube of yellow paint, please. Yeah. Well, do you want cadmium yellow, carmite, you know, gamboge, you know, lemon, cad lemon, cad yellow, all of this sort gamboge. of thing. Gamboge is a transparent version of cadmium yellow. So it's good for flowers and things like that. Can I be really thick and ask a question? Yes. Of course, please <laughs> ask a question, but you won't be thick. Okay, can, I do, can you just run through what... When you say red, orange, yellow, orange, just give me an idea of what ones are yeah. in that. In, okay, so red, orange would be cadmium red or vermilion. Right. So they're, they're a red paint, but they reflect a lot of orange. Okay. Um, an orange, yellow would be something like um, gamboge or cadmium yellow. I have no idea how you spell that, can't you? Yeah, just go with cad yellow. Yeah. Um, a yellow, green is something like a lemon yellow. Or an oreolin. Oreolin, but lemon yellow okay, because fine, it, yeah, or cadmium go. lemon. Anything with lemon in because it, it reflects a lot of green. Okay. A blue green would be something like cerulean, or phthalo blue, or Windsor blue, or cyan. Um, in fact, nearly all blue paints are, so are um, blue, so cerulean. cerulean that's it. Uh, most blues are actually leaning towards the the, the green way. Um, so a purple blue would be something like ultramarine. It's really only the pure purple blue. Um, cobalt blue was made as a substitute for ultramarine, but it isn't as purple. It's 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 more bluey. Yeah. Um, and then a red violet would be something like crimson or carmine, alizarin crimson, magenta. Um, that sort of thing. So that's really useful, Sue. Yes, so I'm glad. I'm glad you asked the question. So yeah. So with the, with triadic, you could go any any way. So you could go. Let's try this. Yellow orange, which is cadmium yellow. Let Let's try, shall we? Let's see what we get. So yellow orange, and then we've got to move. We've got to move three spaces. Yeah, 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 it is, isn't it, really? Yeah. So we've got three spaces. So, you know, one, two, three. So we've got cerulean blue. So this should be, according to this, a harmonious mix of cad yellow, cerulean blue. One, two, three, and crimson. But you see, for it to work well, you would need your colours to be at the same strength. You know, because if you're going to dilute the one, yeah. it won't actually harmonise well with stronger versions of the others. So you've got to sort of look at it in the same sort of way so soft versions or diluted versions or paler versions of all of these would work stronger versions would but it, it it wouldn't work as well it would still be harmonious if you'd got a really strong yellow a really pale crimson and a and a, and a mid blue because they are they are there but if if you think of the strengths of color it does work a bit better when you're looking at like um country's flags yes notice there that the the colors when they come together like the italian flag yeah or the spanish flag yeah they seem to me to be of that gender because yeah yeah um one fetches out the other so you you actually got quite a deep contrast between the colors especially if you've got a white in between absolutely them, well yeah. that's that's the other thing and this this guy chevro noted um in the 1800s that if you have um it's called simultaneous contrast. So if you have a, the colours together, they look different to if you have a white gap between them or if you have a black gap between them. The, um, the, the black actually makes colours glow more 
than white. Yeah, so if, there's something called heraldic colours up there. I remember at school learning something. Yeah, that. which would be more for the flags and the crests and, yeah, and that yeah. sort of thing. And they tend to be more um, traditional mixes, but they probably would go more towards the yeah. the the complementary or harmonious yeah. listing more than anything. So so that is just complementary. That is analogous. That is triadic. You've also got split cup complementary. So if we stick with green again, instead of it being red, you go either side. So you've got red orange and red violet with your green. So instead of it going, you go that way. Or instead of blue and orange, you'd go blue with red orange and yellow orange. So we've got still got we've still got this green mix. Good job, really. So that is our green made from those two of our lemon yellow and cerulean. And then we want sort of carmine and cad red are also. So I've weakened that. So I'll weaken that. I'm rethinking my whole summer wardrobe now, Barry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it, it's interesting if you look towards fashion because these, you know, artists and, and designers have to understand this sort of thing. You see that, if I mute that a little bit more, that doesn't look bad. No. And that's red and green. How did you get those colours again? So that's, that green is made from cerulean and lemon. Okay, the and then, wheel. and those, oh right, so instead of it being complementary, green and red, yes. you go either side to the complementary colour. So we've gone red orange and red purple yes. with the green. So if you were doing yellow, instead of it being purple, you'd go purple blue and purple red. So that would be, if you've got that, again, that's the tricky one with the yellow. Um, because of it being primary. If we get, actually, we'll go the other way. We'll go with the purple. The purple mixed from the two either side it, so crimson and ultramarine. So the opposite of purple is yellow. Yeah. So we'll go with the yellow green and the yellow orange, which is actually um, cad yellow. and lemon yellow so they also work well together um, so that's called split complementary it's all interesting isn't it really because it's stuff you wouldn't really think about but if say you were inventing uh, a painting and you'd got figures in it and you wanted to put clothing on those figures really you're going to want them to wear something that either complements the picture or clothing that complements each other because they're going to jar against yeah. something else. Or e even if you're doing a scene, sort of like which colours work well to, to restrict your palette. The, the fewer colours you put in a painting, the more harmonious it will look. Like we've looked at that here, you know, with just those two colours to make a green, we've got lots of shades in between. So you could almost make a landscape just from those two because you've got your sky, you've got your background colours and you've got, you know, getting warmer towards the front. Um, if you're doing any sort of landscape or flower painting, you want the colours that are going to complement each other and, and create harmony. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to use crimson, that would be quite a nice green to use because you know, or, and that red, so you could put those together to make a nice flower painting, or those together for pansies, or you know. And actually, if you look in nature, you will. Yeah. Because if you think of a of a petal of a pansy, which is purple, you've got that yellow in with it. So it it nature does actually do it for us, but it's then we've got to understand which. Oh, iris is perfect. Yeah. Um, we've then got to take that and go, yeah, okay, so that's purple and that's yellow, but which purple, which yellow will will make it work? You've also got something called square harmony, which is then you go exactly equal. So instead of going to three points, you go to four. So if we go with our green again, we go green, yellow, orange, because that's two spaces, red, and blue, violet. 
yeah mm -hmm. or if we go to purple move to we've got orange red yellow blue green so we've got four and when they work well together they'll create another harmony but then you're adding that fourth mix you've then got that it works in two ways you see you've got square or you've got rectangular which is also called tetradic it's, it's just a bit of a mouthful so with that one if we start with our green you'd go green blue red orange yeah so we've got those there and then you're almost going to the complementary colors of each one to create a rectangle so yeah so you've got two in there yeah yeah so if we go with those two let's try let's try each of those colours. Yeah. You'd end up with just mud, I suppose. Yeah, you technically you'd sort of get what what would possibly be a, a near black or a yeah. grey colour because you, you, you're you using like up when you did that thing about black. Yeah, because of reflecting the light. If you're using all of the colours in the spectrum together, mm. they'll all be absorbing each other. So then you'd get a really dull void of light. So let's try that. We'll go with yellow green, which is lemon yellow. We'll go with yellow orange, which is cad yellow. And then we'll go with the opposite. So yellow orange is purple blue, which is ultramarine. And opposite yellow green is crimson. So those colours are harmonious in the same length. Oh, screen's gone. So if you notice there, it's slightly different. It's just an extension of that one where we've got the cad yellow, cerulean and crimson. We've still got those, but we've then thrown in the lemon yellow because it, it works in a square. So it might seem a bit sort of like brain achy, but A, it's quite, it's quite fun to explore this sort of thing. But it is important, like we discussed in, in, in all areas of painting, it will crop up, really. Which colours work well best? Because then four, we've just done a light, Almost. lower um, block that you first did. Yeah, that, that one and the one above it. Yeah, it is. Like yeah. Done just now, well, let's have a look at that. There. So if we've got red-orange, which is cadmium red, and yellow-orange, we'll do that. We go with red orange, which is cadmium red. And then we we'll go yellow orange, which is cadmium yellow. So we've moved it around a bit. The opposite to the red orange is the cerulean blue. And the opposite to the yellow orange is the purple blue. So we've actually done the top two yeah. of those, which also go together. Um, which I find, I, I do find it really exciting. No matter how many years and decades I've been doing this, the world of colour I find really exciting in the way that it works. And... Um, you know, my number, it does it, it. It is important which you put together. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're designing brands or logos or painting landscapes yeah. or and 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 like I said about <laughs> the fewer the colours you put in, the more harmony you get. Sort of if you're painting with all of these sort of shades, and then you suddenly go, oh, I'll find another. I'll find another green to go with that. I was well, going to say, could you show us how, how it clashes? Yeah, when we, when so, we all it. right, here's a green. <laughs> here's a green I've got on my palette. Let, let's put it with it. It is, it's a bluey green, and it's sort of... It, 
it does stand out against the others. You know, the other three work quite well. And then that one, you said, like, well, why is it not working? The same here, even if I do a pastel version. That's Viridian. Yeah, it's like that, is it fallow? Yeah, it's the same sort of thing. Um, a lot of artists use them with other colours. So like um, Viridian and Permanent Rose make beautiful purples and greys. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if we, do, let's try Viridian um, just as, a, because you've asked. So we've got Viridian and Carmine. They're technically not complementary, they don't work, but they do blend into really interesting tones. But that's technically, it's triadic, but it's it's not in terms of the colour wheel. Mm -hmm. It is a sort of green and a sort of red making yeah. a purpley colour, but they work well. Uh, but also, in, in non-natural terms, these vibrant colours are needed for man-made things and for creating that bit of vibrancy sometimes. So there's nothing wrong with using a Viridian, as long as you use the colours that would work well like with it. Um... <laughs> But, for example, that green does not work well with that green. So if you were painting a landscape and you'd got all these beautiful harmonious colours and you'd mixed it, so you'd limited your palette to about three or five colours, say, and then you go and bung in a field made of viridian or, or sap, it just, it just, you would, you, it, it would jump out so much that you'd lose that harmony. So if you were planning on using a painting with viridian in, you would then have to use it in other areas of your picture. So Viridian would be your main colour and then you'd add, you know, you'd mix it with yellows and you'd mix it with the blues and you'd mix it with the reds to create the harmonious colour. Um, so what we've looked at, at just now is sort of like colour psychology and um, colour theory. Whereas in terms of logical landscape painting, for example, it doesn't always work in this instance uh, because, you know, there will be variants of each of these found in, in the landscape. But like I say, if, if you're going to use Viridian, it's fine. It's not my favourite colour, but you can use it. But if that is then the main green that you use, you can mix it with your cerulean blues to get different tones you can mix it with oh i don't know we'll go with the cadmium yellow to create different tones suddenly it becomes harmonious I was just saying, to me, they look quite yeah um so i'm just picking up random colors for a landscape for example yeah. um here's some crimson or carmine mix it with that and it works because it's now integral. It's part of the colour combinations. It's not an additional. It is, it is the main colour. So whatever you're doing with a landscape, you need to ensure that the colours all are related to each other or mixed with each other, which is then going to work. That works nicely. That doesn't work nicely. Um, that doesn't work nicely in, in the same sort of harmony, but that will because we've made Viridian the colour that we want to use. Um, it's the same with any colour. If you're doing a, a landscape, say we'll use, um, which is why I often just use five colours, I think, in, in many landscapes, because the sky colour will also be relevant in the grass or the trees, and even if I'm doing a sunset, the yellow will be there in something else. So making those colours present in mixes will give you far more harmony to just visually it'd be more pleasing to the eye to look at than having random colors that you just squeeze tubes out and put does that make sense yeah, yeah. so it doesn't really matter in terms of landscape painting because you're going to get a variety of stuff you're not necessarily going to be able to do triadic or um quadriatic or whatever complementary harmonious listings with that because you're you're faced with what you see and somebody might put a purple um, flower bush in front of a green meadow which is next to a bright orange corn meadow you know so it won't work in terms of that then you have to go into what we've just started discussing 
pastels, like Tim Fisher. Yes. What was it called? A discordant colour? Yes. A colour that's not been used anywhere else in the picture. Yes. Like, like for yes. shutters or yes. a Exactly, yeah, and and like with, and they'll say you'll stick a bit of red in a picture yeah. to make it stand out more, mm. um, which works in some things. But yeah. if you want a, a full harmony picture, it it, it it wouldn't it wouldn't always work. You could sort of make that colour. You'd have to sort of tweak it. So if you've got sort of nice soft pictures and then you've got a vibrant man-made thing, it's usually man-made that when it stands out. Mm. Nature's fairly harmonious. Yeah. Um, you could make a similar or an approximate version using the colours that you've already used yeah. in the landscape yeah. and mixed, and that would that would give you that tone mm -hmm. rather than trying to get right. I'll squeeze that out because, like you've seen, it does it does jar. Or you'd use that colour to start with and then work your mixes yeah. from that vibrant colour. Um, so it doesn't really matter which one which one you go for. So here I've got um, Intense Blue, which is a gorgeous, vibrant, green-based blue. Now that really doesn't sit well with any of the others um, for the same reason. So it's like if I add that there, let's soften it a little bit because it stands out. It's not made from the same pairings so it, it will sort of jar. It doesn't show up very well on the screen how vibrant it is, but it is very acidic. But if I use that as my main colour, I can dilute it to make a near cerulean. Or I can make greens out of it using cadmium yellow, for example, and that will give me nice vibrant but mid-greens. And if I was going with a crimson again, that would give me interesting purple tones. But it all goes well together because the the blue, the vibrant blue, which could be shutters in a on a window of a building, um, doesn't stand out because it's used in all of the other areas of the mix. Yeah? Um, that is more harmonious than... Um, than trying to have jarring colours. Sometimes yeah. a jarring colour works because it'll bring it out, sort of. Um, but often they'll be complementary. Uh, you may have seen sort of like creamy yellow buildings in Provence or wherever will have purple shutters mm. because they're complementary, but it will depend on the purple and depend on the yellow on how it works. Um, so there is, a, there is a whole world to colour mixing and we'll be doing a full day on Saturday the 18th, 13th, Saturday the 13th of May. It's a full Saturday class on colour mixing where it's, we look more scientifically at why I will say cadmium red is a red orange and why cadmium yellow is a yellow orange. How we actually see colour and how the tubes of paint are related to the colour wheel and how to get mixes on how to make sure, if you want a bright green, how do I make a bright green? How do I make a, um, a dark purple? How do I make um, a vibrant orange? It is difficult. Verdigo green, Barry. What is that a mixture of? What, viridian or...? No, verdigo. It's, 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 nearly, it's nearly a turquoise green. Well, that's going to be... Um, a lot of the more modern colours are, are based on um, petrol. Well, so, the only reason I'm asking is because um, on those uh, oil water yeah. plates there, they've got that verdigo green, yeah. right? And I do find if you add lemon yellow to that, it yeah. actually creates a lot lighter green than actually a lemon and a cerulean. Yeah, well, it will have... It's already got green in it because it's a green, Yeah. but it will have more of a green-based blue in it yeah. already. Right. So it will be on the way... Mm -hmm to be making a vibrant green as if you've got a lemon yellow and a cerulean right, okay. um, yeah. because it's got a greeny blue in it and it is green yeah. so it would be towards a green it's the same as sort of a teal or a turquoise yeah. um, they will have a green in it yeah. because it is green and then you've got the 
the turquoise or the the blue, which is a green based blue, yeah. to go into it. I've noticed um, with uh, while I'm working with these now that I'm having to work my colours on a palette first. Yeah because it's a lot of difference to using an acrylic. It is, yeah. and, and the other difference is as well, I've, I've, I've recently done a, a commission in gouache, and the colour you mix is not the colour that goes on the paper, no. it actually goes darker. Watercolours dry lighter, gouache dries darker. Um, so you put a colour on, you think, oh, that's perfect, and then it dries, and you think, oh, that, that isn't actually the colour I wanted. Um, so acrylics, and uh, pastels are, are the two safe ones that the colour you've got is the colour that, that it will be. So hopefully that's made a bit more sense as to why, if you're working, sometimes things don't work out. Why, why is that colour not... Why, why, why isn't it working? Why, doesn't it, why does it look wrong? And sometimes it may be that it isn't actually wrong. It's just that the colour's the wrong tone or the colour's not soft enough or the colour's too vibrant or it's the wrong red with the other colours, do you know? So it does make a, a massive difference on whether you're going with complementary or analogous or triadic or split complementary or square or tetradic, whatever you want to be. It is, it is about that visually pleasing thing. Um, and a lot of people don't really care when they look at a painting how you got there, but they'll know if they like it or not because you've bothered, yeah. you know. This is, this is the, the groundwork that you have to put in for the end result to sell. Mm -hmm. um, because people might go, hmm, I like that, but oh, I don't know, you know, there's something about it I can't put my finger on, it doesn't quite work for me. And usually it is the colours, you know, sometimes the greens can be too overpowering if they're the wrong green in the scene or the, you know. Mm. Yeah, but when you think about it, a painting is all about colours in the right place isn't it that that's what it is isn't it you're putting it, the impressionist movement it doesn't even matter there's no detail there as long as and think of turner as long as the colours are in the right shape yeah. and in the right place mm. and the right tone mm. it will work and this is this is uh, looking at because I, I watched the the film turner yeah and um, watching him it's his skies that fascinated yeah. me yeah because i think uh, a lot of people um sometimes consider skies as either um, a crimson, a grey, a white, a blue, but they don't start looking into the colours that can go with it, complementary Yeah, colours. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I find painting more skies on scrap paper yeah. begins me give me a more visual contrast of what to lose into the landscape. Absolutely. I mean, when, you, when you're looking at skies as well, um, that's a whole different ball game because you're looking at it's additive colour mixing because you're looking at the additive of light. So sky colours don't mix the same as paint colours um, and you have different complementary colours in skies and it's a whole new world but you do have to understand there's a lot more science in art and it is worth understanding it or trying to understand it and put it in practice because it does have a really positive effect mm -hmm. on your pictures. It isn't just necessarily all paint what I see. There's a little bit more mm -hmm. to, well actually if I, if I use that colour instead, I can make it stand out. Or if I, make, if I use this colour, I can push it back and then use something else. Or I can make it more pleasing or I can make it less pleasing depending on what the results mm -hmm. are. So that's just a very, very brief overview. And then on our colour mixing day in May, we'll be looking at um, creating colour charts and, and that sort of thing. So the next demo is, we're on the new sheet now, aren't we? The next demo is on the 6th of May, and that is how to create texture in watercolour. Right, so we'll turn that off now. Thank you.